Hello, welcome back to Neonatal Clinical Series. Hello, today we will discuss a simple yet very important hypoglycemic case study. A 34-year-old primogravida after an uncomplicated preg. Nancy is admitted in labor at 36 weeks gestation. The Perina. Tal screening tests are negative, including a negative screen for Group B Streptococcus, GBS, at 35 weeks gestation. MEM. Brain's rupture occurred two hours before vaginal delivery. APGAR scores were 8 and 9 at 1 and 5 minutes, respectively. The male infant weighs 2,700 grams. The mother has planned to exclusively breastfeed the baby, and she begins in the delive. Airy room with what is described as a sluggish first feed. Shortly thereafter, mother and baby are transferred to a postpartum room. Before the baby being breastfed at four hours of age, the nurse on a routine assessment thinks the baby has slight tremors and she performs a point of care, POC, glucose level and it is 36 milligrams per deciliter. To sum up, after four hours of birth, the baby was breastfed. However, the baby suffered from slight tremors, and after examining the blood glucose level, and the result was 36. The nurse gave the baby a formula fed, and after one hour, the nurse measured the blood glucose again. The glucose one hour after the formula feed, the follow up POC glucose level is 52 milligrams per deciliter one hour after the formula feeding supplement, and the nurse's note does not document any further tremors. Should this late preterm infant have been screened sooner than age four hours? Yes. This baby met high-risk criteria for neonatal hypoglycemia and should have been screened sooner because the baby was late preterm. Let's discuss the risk factors for neonatal hypoglycemia. The risk factors are classified into maternal and neonatal risk factors. As for the maternal risk factors, diabetes during pregnancy, hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia, is recognized as a major cause of persistent recurrent hypoglycemia in newborns, and it may be associated with an increased risk of brain injury since it not only decreases serum glucose levels, but also prevents the brain from utilizing secondary fuel sources by suppressing fatty acid release and ketone body synthesis. Some cases of hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia are transient and resolve over the course of several days, while others require more aggressive and prolonged treatment. If she is treated by beta blocker slash or hypoglycemic agents. Neonatal conditions, IUGR and SGA, due to depleted stores. Preterm, due to depleted stores. Hypothermia, increased utilization of glucose. Unwell baby X, sepsis, increased utilization of glucose. Suspected endocrine condition, e.g. stage. Hemolytic disease of baby, increased utilization of glucose, severe fluid restriction, obvious syndromes, e.g. midline defects, Beth with Weidemann syndrome, hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia can occur genetically or due to secondary factor, such as asphyxia. Is this infant symptomatic and does the infant's glucose level, 40 mg slash DL, require an immediate intervention? Yes the tremors could be symptoms of hypoglycemia because symptoms of neonatal hypoglycemia are nonspecific. They often occur in newborns who are normoglycemic and have other problems. Jitteriness is just as likely among normoglycemic infants and those with a variety of other conditions. In addition, equally low blood glucose values are found in infants with no clinical signs asymptomatic hypoglycemia. Therefore, the press, ins or absence of symptoms cannot necessarily be used to discriminate between normal and abnormal blood. Glucose levels. Do infants who are exclusively breastfed have lower plasma glucose concentrations than those fed infant formulas? Breastfed infants may have lower plasma glucose levels than formula-fed infants. Should the infant simply have been left to continue breast 
Feeding. Yes, it is possible to have just continued the breastfeeding because the symptoms were very mild and were actually associated with acceptable glucose levels. So in concussion, any symptomatic baby with blood glucose level lower than 40 milligrams per deciliter should be given for glucose. While asymptomatic babies at birth to four hours of age initial feed within one hour, screen glucose 30 minutes after first feed. If initial screen less than 25 milligrams per deciliter feed and check again in one hour if still less than 25 milligrams per DL give IV glucose, while if blood glucose between 25 to 40 refeed and check it again. While after four hours of birth, continue feeds Q2-3 hours. Screen glucose prior to each feed. If blood glucose less than 35 milligrams per DL, Feed and recheck again. If still less than 35 milligrams per DL, then give for glucose. And this was our case for today. Subscribe to get all our videos as we will continue sharing neonatal cases and drug videos. If you have any question, request, or suggestion, please leave a comment.